Okay, welcome back. Time flies when you're having fun, right? So what do you think of those interviews? Amazing, right? And Bruce Golden, that perspective from a, a VC investor in Silicon Valley, really provocative stuff. So to wrap up module one, I want to do a couple of things here, just in a few minutes. Number one, I want to remind you of the five customer funded models and how you might want to think about them at this point. Number two, I want to tee up some things that you might want to read if you bought the customer funded business. And I also want to suggest some optional readings that we'll provide for you here that will put more arrows into your entrepreneurial quiver. And I want to remind you that mine is not the only voice saying customer funding is a better way forward for many of you, at least at the outset of your business. And then last, I want to give you an assignment to do before you start on module two. So let's get started. First, you've now learned there are five ways to fund your business with your customer's money, as shown in this figure that you saw earlier. For those of you who are still at the I want to run my own business stage, you might think of these five models as one more filter through which you can run the ideas you may have in mind. Wouldn't it be great if you could start a business that could be funded this way? Not all businesses can, as we'll see later in this course. So for those of you with an opportunity in mind, maybe even a business plan or a completed business model canvas in hand, or who have already proven that your technology works, you might start thinking about the five models and which of them might work in the business you have in mind. Maybe you don't need to stay with us for all seven modules, or maybe you want to focus on a certain one of them first and can just focus on one or two of them. You've already heard several voices other than mine providing a wider set of views on these customer funded ideas. But there are surely others in your community too whose views I'd like you to hear. So here's the assignment that those of you who are taking this course for a certificate need to do and that the rest of you just might want to do to help build your network and add to your entrepreneurial skills. Number one, I'd like you to interview not less than five entrepreneurs. You can do more if you like or experienced angel investors in your own community. Tell them about this course you're doing and ask them what, in their experience, are the benefits of taking investment early. And by early, I mean taking money before you have paying customers. Then ask them this question. What do they think are the drawbacks of taking VC money that early? Write down what you learn, and if you're taking the course for credit, submit it to your peers for feedback. Okay, now, what else do I suggest you do to wrap up this first module? First, there's an optional article I've posted on the website for you to read about discovering unknown unknowns, unk unks I call them, the art of getting answers to questions you don't even know to ask. In other words, how to uncover the unknown unknowns that can sink your little startup in a heartbeat. It's a really valuable skill Every entrepreneur needs to have that skill, and this is a great opportunity to begin putting that skill into your arsenal. There's another optional article I'd like you to read as well. It's on the Kennett Partners website, and it's about bootstrapping. Some of you are probably familiar with this idea, this bootstrapping notion, and some of you may already be doing it. Bootstrapping your venture is about finding ways to keep costs down so you don't have to raise money to get started and to grow. It's the flip side, if you like, of the customer funding coin. Customer funding brings the money in and bootstrapping prevents it from running out too fast. It's a great article, it's free, I highly recommend it. In addition, there's a wonderful recent blog post by a guy named David Heinemeyer Hansen. He's the founder of a customer funded web application company called Basecamp. It's developed a product called Ruby on Rails, widely used and known by web developers all over the world. It's at the URL we'll provide for you here, and I expect you'll find that article called Reconsider very thought-provoking as well. For those of you reading along in the customer-funded business, I want to call your attention to a graph. So on page 25 in chapter 1, and there are three or four pages of discussion that explain its implications for you as an entrepreneur, and also for investors. 
It provides some, frankly, shocking data collected by Josh Lerner at Harvard Business School on the lousy returns VCs have delivered to their investors since the beginning of time in the VC industry. I guarantee the data will surprise you and it will give you one more reason to think very carefully about taking VC too early. I also suggest you read what I've learned about crowdfunding, which is one kind of pay in advance model, of course. That, again, is in chapter one. Among other things you'll learn there is this. Did you know that most of the time, if you're gonna have a successful crowdfunding campaign, you have to bring your own crowd? You might also wanna read chapter three on matchmaker models, which is what we'll be discussing in the next module. Finally, there's a slide with a couple of questions on which you might wanna reflect that closes this module. So there you have it. Module one is now under your belt. In module two, we're gonna take an in-depth look at matchmaker models. These are models of companies like eBay and Airbnb that bring together buyers and sellers without ever owning or touching the stuff that is bought and sold. And we'll have a bunch more stories and interviews, including one with another leading VC investor, also from California. The matchmaker model is a really powerful one, and it's one that many dot-com entrepreneurs have in mind these days. So I know you're gonna enjoy hearing about it and how best to put it to use. But meanwhile, my colleague Tiffany is going to stir things up on the discussion board and get all of you guys learning from one another as well as from me. I'm sure some among you have already raised early money from angels or VCs, or you know people who have with both good outcomes and probably with not so good outcomes. So let's start swapping those lessons, learn from one another, and see how vibrant we can make this community. And after all that, We'll head on to module two. Hasta la vista. Mm -hmm.